Hello friends. In this video, we will discuss about the topic diffusion. And this topic is very useful for BSc as well as for MSc students and for all those candidates who are preparing for any competitive examination like NET, SET, GATE. Now let's start. In this video, we will cover the following topics first we will see the meaning of diffusion. Then we will discuss the importance of diffusion. We also discuss the different applications of diffusion. We also see the types of diffusion. And at last, we will see that what factors that influence diffusion. Now, how we define diffusion? So diffusion from an atomic perspective is just the stepwise migration of atoms from lattice site to lattice site. In fact, the atoms in solid materials are in constant motion, rapidly changing their positions. And when an atom to make such a move, the following two conditions must be required. First one is there must be an empty adjacent site. And second one is the atom must have sufficient energy to break bonds with its neighbor atoms and then cause some lattice distortion during the displacement. This energy is vibrational in nature. At a specific temperature, some small fraction of the total number of atoms is capable of diffusive motion by virtue of the magnitude of their vibrational energies. This fraction increases with temperature. So how we define diffusion? So diffusion is the process of mixing which involves the movement of atoms from area of higher to lower concentration. Or we can say that diffusion is the shifting of atoms and molecules to new sites within a material resulting in the uniformity of composition as a result of thermal agitation. Now let's see. What are the importance of diffusion? The first importance of diffusion is at room temperature, or we can say that at ordinary temperature, diffusion occurs very slowly in most solids and is of little or no importance. Diffusion occurs more and more rapidly as the temperature increases and is the basis for most metallurgical processes. The second importance of diffusion is it is important in the any nearing recrystallization and grain growth of cold work matter in doping of semiconductors and in the formation of metallic bonds like soldering, welding, powder, metallurgy. Third importance of diffusion is the diffusion or lake of it will determine the degree of homogeneity attained in solid crystals forming from a mat. The absence of homogeneity in a solidified casting is called dendritic segregation, or we can say that coding. The fourth importance of diffusion is, diffusion is also important in the heat treatment of steel and in the precipitation hardening of alloys. Now let's see what are the applications of diffusion. So the application of diffusion are, first one is, it is useful for phase changes, for example, gamma to alpha iron. It is useful for metal bonding, like welding, brazing, soldering, and metal cladding. Third application of diffusion is, it is useful for oxidation of metal. Fourth one is, it is useful for production of strong bodies by powder metallurgy. Then doping of semiconductors. Then recovery and recrystallization. Surface treatment of stills, case hardening. And the last application of diffusion is, it is useful for precipitation of phases in age hardening. Now let's see what are the types of diffusion. There are different types of diffusion like self-diffusion, inter-diffusion, volume diffusion, grain boundary diffusion, and at last, surface diffusion. 
Now, how we define self-diffusion? Self-diffusion is the migration of atoms in pure materials. In a pure substance, a particular atom does not remain at one equilibrium site indefinitely. Rather, it moves from place to place in the material. Self-diffusion in a pure material can be detected experimentally by radioactive tracers. How we define interdiffusion, which is the second type of diffusion. So, it occurs in binary metallic alloys observed in binary metal alloys such as copper nickel system. Now, how we define volume diffusion? This is the third type of diffusion. So, volume diffusion means atomic migration through the bulk of the material. And fourth one is grain boundary diffusion. It implies atomic movement along the grain boundaries alone. And the activation energy for grain boundary diffusion is lower than for volume diffusion. And the last type of diffusion is surface diffusion. So how we define it? It implies atomic movement along the surface of a phase, for example, solid vapor interface. Now, what factors that influence diffusion? So the diffusion, or we can say that diffusion coefficient, which is represented by capital D, are influenced by the following factors. First one is diffusing species. Second one is crystal structure. Third one is grain boundaries, dislocation and surfaces. Fourth one is grain size. Fifth is temperature. Sixth, pressure. And last one is, which is seven, concentration. So this is about diffusion. In the next lecture, we will discuss the fixed law for diffusion. Thanks. Thanks for watching.